I have to stay alive, to tell all of this, to tell everyone about it, to convince people that it was true. Then they were standing in front of the gate and seeing the camp for the first time. It was made up of large brick barracks. They were two stories high with pitched roofs and small attic windows. The streets between the buildings were well capped. There were pavements with tidy paving stones and small strips of lawn. It could have been a model village. Above the gate, in cast iron, the concentration camp slogan, Arbeit macht frei. This gate was a gate to hell, and instead of work sets you free, it should have said, abandon all hope, ye who enter here. The camp was surrounded by electric fences, but what was even worse was invisible, 3000 volts, and every 10 meters, a sign mounted on the fence with a skull and crossbones and the word stop in German and Polish. Halt. Stoi. Hans looked around and was suddenly shocked. Diagonally across from their barrack, there was a block and behind that window he could see women. Yes, there was a sign too, block 10. So this was the women's block. Jacques saw the surprise on his face. What do you see? Hans hesitated. I think that's where my wife is. I'm only allowed to die by execution and they're not executing me here in Auschwitz either. They're counting on me as a Jew, dropping dead by myself. At four in the morning you get up, fasts off, wash, a few drops of water, no soap, Dry yourself with your fast. Often you don't even get a turn at a tap. The others weren't allowed to see it. Hans opened the package in a corner of the room. It contained two apples, a piece of cake and a piece of bacon. He ate one of the apples and a bit of the cake immediately, hiding the rest for Friedel. Hans hid and remained in the camp he found a notebook and a pencil and began to write. What's Birkenau? Hans asked. Birkenau is an enormous camp, Eli answered. It's part of the whole Auschwitz complex. On arrival, they tell all the old people and all the children they have to shower and take them into a big room. In reality, they gas them. Then, they burn their bodies. What you can see is the flame, the eternal flame from the chimney of the crematorium. Day and night, the fire, always the consciousness that people burn there. Suddenly he was standing in front of the tower. Carefully he climbed up, step by step. It made him feel like a victor, Standing so high and looking over the camp, he should never have escaped. Even from up here, where he had the whole world at his feet, where there seemed to be no limit to how far his gaze extended, Birkenau looked big. In that place, more people had been killed than anywhere else in the world. <laughs>